Hi, everybody. Welcome to a very special edition of Podium Picks. I'm Sean Woodland being joined by Tommy Marquez. I am in the Working Against Gravity studios. Tommy is working remotely on this 4th of July weekend. Tommy, how you doing? I'm, I'm doing all right. You know, it's uh, 9 a.m. and I'm already wearing sunglasses, so we're off to a good start. <laughs> and you're, you are festooned in your best uh, red, white, and blue attire. I could, that's great. Yes. I uh, can't say that I can't say the same for me, although I do have a flag on my shirt. And I, really I will say a rogue shirt is pretty American. Yeah, that is true. Uh, but first, uh, this episode is presented before we get into anything by working against gravity. They are our presenting sponsor and we're super happy to have them on board. And they have some pretty cool stuff for our listeners and friends of the show. Yes, if you guys aren't familiar, we've been talking about them a ton because we love them a ton. Uh, they are an online nutrition coaching program that sets you up one on one with your very own nutrition coach, helps you whether it's whether you're tracking macros, whether you're keto, whether you're doing intermittent fasting, they'll set you up with a coach that'll help you dial in your nutrition and create some long-term sustainable nutrition habits. Um, I've been a part of Team Wag for more than three years. They worked with everybody from everyday, you know, average Joes like myself to some of the biggest names in the sport, like Katrin David's daughter, Cole Sager, who have been on the program for multiple years as well. Um, they've got a sweet deal for all of our listeners. If you go to workingagainstgravity.com and use the code ELITE50, you get 50 bucks off your first month. They also have a 90 day money, uh, money back guarantee. So if after 90 days, you're not fully satisfied, you get all of your money back in the very least, you got to learn a little bit about your nutrition and work with one of the top notch, uh, highly qualified nutrition coaches as well. So working against gravity.com elite 50, get 50 bucks off your first month. I love working against gravity and we love having them on board. We also love the 4th of July. And today is July 4th, uh, as uh, people across this great nation are, are celebrating our independence. So we said, hey, let's do a special podium picks for our July 4th favorite. So this is anything that we love about uh, celebrating the 4th of July and, and when, what it brings. And I, I think that last time you started, did you start? Mm -hmm. I can't remember. All right. So I'll start this week with my spirit of the games and my dark horse and, and these are pretty you know pretty basic pretty standard things so my spirit okay. of games is going to go to parades you oh know, july parades are they're a they're a special thing here in the united states because they're, they, you know they they don't really have a theme if you go to your kind of local uh fourth of july parade of course everyone's waving the red white and blue but it's like everybody can take part in it you know you have your local high school marching band to your local pop warner football team to mm -hmm. you know some dudes doing karate as they walk down. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's awesome. And then everybody just hangs out and uh, <laughs> has snacks and, and drinks and, and cheers their, their favorites. And there's just like people driving by in cars and it's a, it's a good time. It brings the whole, the whole community out. So uh, every community has their own, you know, spin on parades. I know some have like boat parades, others have, you know, just basic car parades. Some people make floats and there's like a pancake breakfast sometimes that goes along with them. That's mm -hmm. kind of a smaller town type thing, but I okay, gotta love your, your 4th of July parades. I mean, it's just a, uh, it is just a great representation uh, of the community at large. You said uh, guys doing karate. I have a, a distinct memory from the Kitty Capers parade in like 95 in <laughs> Salinas and some dude just doing spinning roundhouse heel kicks just down Main Street Salinas. Yeah, that's all they do. They just come out and they do, you know, there's all kinds of great stuff. I've seen like realtors are out there, you know, just because it's free advertising and they take part in the parade. And, Come uh, get your houses here. <laughs> exactly. That's right. And then you, you've got your high school band, and then you've got the, the karate guys, and then you've got your Pop Warner football team, and then maybe Little League, and then maybe, you know, mm -hmm. the Daughters of the American Revolution. It's great. Yep. It's, just a, it's a great uh, great experience to go out to a, a local 4th of July parade. So that's my spirit of the games. Now, my dark horse, I'm dipping into the fireworks family, and I'm going to oh, say dark okay. horse, sparklers. All right. Everybody loves a good sparkler. Who hasn't had a good time with a sparkler? You know, especially it's like the, it's like your intro to fireworks. Because when you're a kid, you can't, you know, you can't play with the good stuff. So they hand you a sparkler <laughs> and they're like, just go dance around in the yard with it for a couple seconds. And then that's it. And then and when you're older, too, you know, then you can get a little more complicated with your sparklers. You might have four or five at a time, you know, up in your sparkler game. You can mount them onto things. They're, uh, they are the, the five tool player of the firework family, if you will. Yep. So that's here, a, <laughs> I love that. I love that. Here, here, Timmy, here's a mildly combustible stick that we're about 90% sure you won't, you won't maim yourself with. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My brother and I, man, we, we figured out, and I'm not, do not try this at home, kids, uh, that when it got down to the nub before you have to stick it in the water, it's like, mm -hmm. well, just chuck the thing. <laughs> it was like throw it in the street. Not yep. a good idea. Um, yeah. So my father was not a, not a fan of that. For all of our for all of our photographers and videographers, you can do long exposure light painting with there them you too. Go. You can That's do some true. cool stuff. 
Yeah. yeah. Very okay. versatile. So those are my two. Those are my uh, Spirit of the Games goes to parades and Dark Horse will go to Sparklers. So I turn it over to you. Yes. All right. So my, my Dark Horse I'll go with is uh, Fruit Salad. Um, <laughs> fruit Salad. Okay. Yes. Because everyone has like, you know, you go to a 4th of July barbecue or a picnic of some sort or, you know, after the parade, you know, your neighborhood gets together and kind of does something collectively. And you kind of know that it's right in that, that middle of summer, heart of summer, July 4th, when someone brings out like just a big old fruit salad. It's like a red, <laughs> you can do like the red, white, and blue salad with like, you know, raspberries and uh, blueberries and, and, um, and uh, strawberries. Or you can do, which I don't know if it classifies, but you know when you take a, a watermelon and you scoop out the watermelon into balls and then you put it back mm -hmm. in the watermelon? I don't know what kind of like, like what genius thought of that. A twice <laughs> baked watermelon. Exactly. It's twice <laughs> baked watermelon. It's uh, um, just when you see that big bowl put on the table and everybody's got a little saran wrap over it. Everybody's like, all right, fruit salads here. That's kind of like the appetizer as you kind of go along the lines. The grill's cooking. I know that it's 4th of July when a bit, nice big old fruit salad hits the That's table. That's a good one. I like that. Um, and so my uh, spirit of the games um, is going to be uh, red, white, and blue bedazzled denim. <laughs> denim. Okay. You, all right. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> you know it's 4th of July when mom and dad start pulling out the fancy uh, <laughs> red, white, and blue sequined vests. Mm -hmm. And you know, may maybe coming from a, a farm town, we had a little bit of different style going on, but you maybe had some, some a jean jacket macro made with like some bejeweled like American flag on it. Mm -hmm. Or you get one of those denim hats that had like the yeah. USA flag on it. Like you knew that it was, it was 4th of July when, when all the fancy denim came out, you know, you put, you put your, your, uh, your date night denim away and you pulled out the bedazzled denim and mm. um, my mom had a big old thing of sequins just in case uh, my mom was quite crafty too so you know we, 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 got, we got some we got some good looking uh, red white and blue American flag denim going on that's, that is great Those, <laughs> that's perfect because now as we get into the top three I'll start with my third place one and that just merges perfectly with what my third place is and that is red white and blue swag oh yeah they, you yeah better one. you have you're exhibiting some right now but I you know everything that you can get that's red white and blue get like bandanas for your dogs or you know the weird the crazy glasses that you wear or you know people get you know, abraham lincoln riding on a dinosaur waving a flash yeah. an ak-47 like that shirt i've seen uh the bandanas everything like people go to the next level the the bedazzled denim you know yes that's something i it was at the top of my head now that <laughs> yeah i mean it's just everybody gets down with the red white and blue you know face paint um, it's amazing what people can come up with. So yeah, yeah red, white, and blue swag, man. And, yeah. and every year it just seems like it, it just gets taken to the next level. Yeah. You get those Swolberham Lincoln type, like <laughs> yeah. he's got like a cutoff shirt and oh man, I love it. And, uh, although, even though technically I think it's illegal and like a violation I of our flag code, actually, yeah. but it's one of those things where like, it's not illegal. It's just frowned upon and it's highly encouraged on the state. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I think we let it slide yep. on July 4th. Ooh. All right. Um, so my, my third place is something that you touched on earlier. Okay. Um, I'm going into the fireworks department, but specifically bootleg fireworks. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> because there was nothing more exciting than, you know, uh, so my grandpa lived on a cul-de-sac, right? We'd go over to my grandpa's and we'd all like the whole neighborhood would throw fireworks in the cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, everybody had that one cousin, Jimmy, who managed, <laughs> who knew some guy who got some Mexican, some fireworks from Mexico that came off the back of the truck. Usually had a sudden, hand. <laughs> <laughs> he comes running out into the street like King Arthur holding the sword, but he's got, <laughs> instead of it, he's got a mortar fire, a mortar tube in his hand. Yep. And he starts like throwing up mortars into the air. And then that just kind of turned everything up into another notch. And then, you know, Every once in a while, like, you know, Jimmy might come back a few years later and he's missing the finger and you wonder, <laughs> yeah. well, well, maybe. An eye patch. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, then, and then eventually you kind of learn to bootleg your own fireworks when you take the piccolo peats and you basically turn them into small M80s by pitching, <laughs> pitching them off. Um, try that at home. Yep. Yeah. Do not try that at home. Um, but yeah, th th there was like that little bit of danger that year. That you, <laughs> and, and, you know, when I got older, you know, and I, you know, met some people and I was able to ob obtain some bootleg fireworks of my own. I felt like we'd come full circle. So and that's pretty that, good. 
And that's why I can't hear in my right ear. <laughs> <laughs> so th this is a fantastic, uh, again, segue into my second place one now. And this actually does tie in to last week's Dad Moves episode because I had to bring oh. my father into this one. So my second place is my, my father's firework critiques. And what I mean by this is that he, he would – he would always announce when he, you know, you'd have your home fireworks shows. When you'd bring out those fountains, he'd always announce basically how much it cost him and then <laughs> set the expectation as to how good the firework was supposed to be. <laughs> so then he would light it, and then you know the thing would go off. He's like, "Man, I paid six bucks for that," <laughs> you know, something like that. Or, uh, you know, I remember one time we had a friend, uh, a friend of our family came over, and he was, he was older than my, my father was, and he bought one of those Roman candles. Mm -hmm. you know, oh. Yeah, he lit it, and he's sitting there for like a minute. It's just doing nothing. He's like, "I just spent eight ninety five for a Judy Road Flare." <laughs> yeah, so, there's always an expectation. Oh man, this one cost me nine bucks. So sit back. This is gonna be a show. Um, so yeah, there was a, there was this uh, always an announcement of how much oh. money it cost, and then that would raise or lower or at least appropriately set the expectation as to how spectacular the firework was going to be. Oh, I I love that. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> God, uh, it, like forbid like heavens forbid that it was a, a dud you know oh. if, if uh and yeah. which which i've learned the the whole night. yeah oh man that's oh that's the worst mm -hmm. um oh yeah that's a good one um all right so my second place is uh is nathan's hot dog eating contest oh yes that's, <laughs> that's really good I, yeah good job on that one it happens every fourth of july my understanding is it's still going to happen today, too. Um, and really, there's just not much more American than watching Joey Chestnut just house like 80 <laughs> hot dogs um, in a frantic frenzy of like, you know, there's, I mean, there's like 12 people on stage. There's the, oh my God, I can't remember. There's an exemption that allows someone into the contest every year that's not a professional eater. It's like, it's called like the the McIlvaney exemption. It's like I just love how in depth it is, and you have all these these uh, professional eaters with nicknames like Jaws and the Black Widow and like De <laughs> Death right, Strike. And I'm like, I was like, are you a cartoon character? <laughs> um, are you a comic book guy? Or are you a professional eater? And then you know, one by one, Joey Chestnut always takes him down from San Jose, California. Whoa! Uh, all yeah, right. I watched from San Jose. I watched him eat an iguana's burrito zilla, the five pound one, mm -hmm. in like 45 seconds. I have never seen anything more impressive of a feat in my life. Wow. Uh, All right. Amazing. Now, wait, uh, I thought, in, what, what happened to Kobayashi? Isn't he, wasn't he Joey Chestnut's biggest rival? He was. And uh, apparently they both have this, this, like, uh, this, like, I don't want to say it's a disorder, but this medical situation where their stomach, like, sits at a different place. Uh -huh. So when it expands and it expands like downward, I think. And so it provides more room for you to physically eat. Okay. Um, you know, Kobayashi used to be the, the kind of, I would say he was the, ah, uh, he was like the, the magic Johnson or the Larry bird, like the old time. Uh, he like started creating some new stuff. Maybe it was Dr. J, right. Okay. You know, started palming the ball and, mm -hmm. um, and he had the Kobayashi wiggle where you like yeah. sift everything down, which actually works by the way. Um, I've used that. To, to success on Thanksgiving a few times. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like you might be able to hold your own in one of these. I, 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 I will say, Sean, I was the two-time winner of the Lord of the Wings competition. <laughs> Lord of the Wings. <laughs> at, uh, <laughs> at Santa Clara with my uh, friends. <laughs> one way to rule them all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, I will say, I may have, may have put down somewhere north of 50 or 60 hot wings. So wow. I, can, uh, I can hold them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can undress a wing, that's for sure. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, but then Kobayashi, all of a sudden, he got beat by Joey Chestnut. And I think he couldn't handle the pressure. And I think he cracked and he like refuses to show up now. And he like, he, he became like, have you ever seen uh, King of Kong, like Fistful of Quarters? No. It's the documentary about like the record for Donkey Kong. Oh, the wow. video game. Yeah. After the first guy got his record broken, he started getting all shady. I think that's what happened with Kobayashi. Okay. So. Wow. Uh, brought it back to America. America. There. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Well, that was good. That's a really good, that's, that's strong. Um, so I got my number one. Now, my number one might be underwhelming, but it's my number one. And my number one is blooming ground flowers. Ooh. Now, if, you're not, yeah. if you don't know what these are, if you didn't grow up in a city that allowed home fireworks, they were basically these little, there's like a size of like a roll of nickels. And you would light one end or both ends. I can't remember. 
and then they would spin around and it would just like zoom all over the place on the ground and it was <laughs> I mean, yeah and we would like if you could get multiple going at the same time it was awesome now these were you know you want to talk about pleasing the dad scale of costs and entertainment you know like the cost was relatively low entertainment value extremely high so it was very popular in the woodland household because you could fire five of those things out in the street and everyone had a blast as you watched the blooming, blooming ground flowers and it was just mm -hmm. i don't know why i like those things so much because you know fireworks to me were always a little bit underwhelming because it was just like i think if you've seen one more or less you've seen them all unless you go yeah. to some gigantic show that's like on the national mall or washington mall or if you go to like you know Mount rushmore or something like that i could see why that would be uh, pretty cool. I think Boston, the Boston Pops used to do a, a show, something like that. I get that. But for more or less, fireworks shows are what they are. But man, you cannot beat a good blooming ground flower, man. Oh, man. come around one time a year, and it's been forever since I've been able to see one. So I'm going to have to go back home to, to Sacramento, where, where I think they still allow that stuff, and, and buy a few from the from the local fireworks stands. Oh, yeah. I, I uh, <laughs> don't do this at home. We used, <laughs> we used, to, we used to take blooming ground flowers and slide them underneath our, uh, our friend's feet. He'd be like, oh, flashbang, okay. get down! And treat them like <laughs> flashbang grenades. Uh, uh, not, they were great because smart. they were just like something they would run into each other and it was just, I don't know, it was... Yeah. I loved them. They would like battle if they bumped yeah, into each exactly. other. Yeah, yeah. And Who was the king of the blooming ground flowers? <laughs> and they would change color too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, um, all right, so, so my number one, um, it is a song actually. Okay. It is a version of a song. It is Ray Charles, "America the Beautiful." Ooh, that is great. As seen right. and 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 remembered in the American cinematic classic, "The Sandlot." Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so in, in that movie, it is Fourth of July. They're uh, the you know the boys have a big day planned. I believe the scene starts with the great Hambino running down the Fourth of July picnic, you know, and just grabbing like hot dogs left and right just mashing them down and then running to get to the field and it was the only time that they played at night because the fireworks allowed them to see uh when they were out on the sandlot and there's this like beautiful slow kind of like dreamy sequence that starts with ray charles america the beautiful and uh it's like one of my favorite songs and uh like it's it's one of my parents favorite songs and it's just like ah oh, man it just hits you right in the feels that's a good one I encourage people to Google it. That that clip is up on YouTube, and uh, just hearing him kind of croon, and he like adds a little like you know kind of sauce into it. You know, throws in a now wait a minute. <laughs> throws all these like you're like whoa, all right. Oh, <laughs> Extra instructions in the song. Yes. You what it oh yeah, it was it was great. Yeah, uh, that, every that would that's one of I think that would be up there as far as songs go. Like with the the uh, national anthem that with Whitney Houston did at the Super Bowl. I think it was like yeah, or ninety one. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's iconic. a. There's a there's an article I think by ESPN and a, maybe an ESPN thirty for thirty all about Whitney singing that song. Oh. It was like the night Whitney brought the house down or something yeah. like that. Yeah, it's it's awesome. It's yeah, that's like it's like right up there. Um, that that is one like there's a there's like a few songs my my mom has been like when I kick the bucket I want you to play this song and like some of those ones are like right up there. Yeah. Yep. Now now that we have our complete list, what are, what are some that you had that didn't make the top five like one of mine uh, one of mine was a, a pool party a good old yeah. july 4th pool party mm -hmm. and I, I thought i can't really put that on the list because you can kind of have a pool party any time in the summer yeah but when you theme it july 4th and it's something a little more cool you might get a fruit salad yeah yeah exactly <laughs> i uh <laughs> I, I had old navy american flag shirts oh those are good <laughs> yeah, yeah i feel like you i feel like that's like the um you know there's that meme where where it's like um like the, the that's easy button where it's like yeah. you forget to do something you have to slap it like <laughs> forgot to buy a july 4th thing like american flag old navy shirt like everybody's got one of those hidden somewhere like yep. in a vault just in case like breaking case breaking case of freedom <laughs> uh, that's a good one yeah i had uh i i had pancake breakfast and there was a separate thing mm -hmm. but then again mm -hmm. i don't know how prevalent that is um around america and they do mm -hmm. it at different times as well um what else yeah, I think that was about it. I mean, skyrockets, obviously, you got to put those. I mean, those were, that's so ubiquitous, though. Yeah, I had cherry bombs, uh, oh, little yeah. cherry bombs um, that they, they, they used to be a little bit more powerful, but then they kind of nerfed them as I got a little <laughs> bit older. Um, yeah. But we used to throw those under our friend's feet, too, which is not smart. No. Uh, yeah, it was not smart. The, when they got nerfed is when we would throw them under the feet because they would I, just like crackle, 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 yeah. and it would like sting your legs. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I always uh, have the anticipation too of seeing the fireworks stands start to be erected in town. Like, oh, yes, fireworks stands going up. Mm -hmm. That was good. That you knew, and you knew they had started selling when your neighbors started randomly celebrating Ju June twenty eighth and June twenty seventh <laughs> by sending fireworks like, up a yep. few days early. One a night, and then I also another one I was thinking of too is just the names that they would put on some of these fireworks. Oh you know, yes. <laughs> You know, Star Spangled Blowout 5000 or whatever it was. Or, you know. <laughs> oh, that's like the, that scene years. from, oh, that scene from Joe Dirt where yeah. he's like, you don't got any husker doos, husker don'ts, whistling bungholes. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, no, I just got snakes and sparklers. <laughs> yep, exactly. Snakes. Those were, oh. you want to talk about a major disappointment. Oh, God. Those are terrible. They still make those? I, I don't know. I, I remember... Uh, I just remember they started branding like safe and sane fireworks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, come on. Like, and then, you know, then the, the snakes were always on it. And I'm like, yeah. I, you know, for lack of a better term, you know, kids, it was like, you're watching like basically a, a turd <laughs> flop around. Yeah, that's essentially what, yeah, it, was. what it, was it was. Boring. And then they had the, uh, the pagoda was pretty cool. Like that really, <laughs> that would make was that the one that and it would yeah, like spin, it would spin and, and then yeah. it would turn into a pagoda. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like yeah that. Not, not too spectacular. Ooh, man. I was, I'm trying to think if there's any, any good ones. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just those... the music that you hear, you know, mm -hmm. it's always, you know, you gotta, you, they throw some Bruce Springsteen in there, even though. Oh, yeah. That's what I, oh, man. I had, worth it, you know, I had Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. I just had Bruce Springsteen on oh, my okay. list. I had it written Locked. down here and I, and I X'd it out. Yeah. For sure. Yep. Well, all right. Well, what do you got planned for uh, today's festivities? Uh, so, um, I'm here up in the mountains, uh, going to spend some time outside, going to do a little workout, um, going to barbecue a little bit. Um, we have a little bit of patch of, of water. We can go hang out at the lake. Um, just going to kind of float around, have some good time. Just kind of, just kind of, uh, I guess just kind of put the phones away and, and relax a little nice. bit. And, um, one of, one of my, one of my friends has brought a, a projector screen. So uh -huh. he's going to play something for it. It's a surprise. Okay. Um, he he uh he brought everybody a gift bag with like like sparklers and mm -hmm. and and every and like little Fourth of July doodads and then where he's gonna put on some sort of show so okay should be cool yeah right. just he'll say you guys better be entertained this cost me nine ninety five <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> this this bad boy cost me fifteen seventy five pay attention <laughs> so yeah but other than that just hanging out you know having a good time taking some time to uh to enjoy the the holiday given everything that's going on, you know, and just kind of relax. For sure, man. Well, listen, have a great time. Uh, happy fourth to everybody. Uh, yes. you know, stay safe. Have a great time. Uh, for Tommy Marquez, I'm Sean Woodland. We will talk to you guys next time.